So today we are going to be going over 10 of the most potent pure parfum fragrances on the market that I think every guy should have or should seriously consider looking into to purchase. Now I have to admit, and uh, I'm sure you guys have noticed this as well, but parfum fragrances are, are some of my favorite fragrances. Just that concentration in general works really well on my skin. And also the progression leading up to a parfum flanker release the further you go, the more refined they get and they get even more dialed in. And by the time you get that pure parfum, it just ends up being a really, really well seasoned flanker most of the time. So they kind of go through a few different trial and error releases in between that point, then you end up with a premium product. And again, that's most of the time, not always though. And so today I'm going to be covering 10 of my favorite parfum scents. These are the strongest ones that I have that are actual parfum scents, and they're ones that I think you guys should look into as well. And again, that leads me to my next point here. These are actual parfum concentrated scents. Now it can get a little bit tricky because there are tons of lay parfum scents and even just straight up parfum scents, but they're still eau de parfums. A couple examples, uh, Le Mal Le Parfum, it's an eau de parfum intense. YSLY Le Parfum, eau de parfum intense. A Missoni Parfum, literally the name of the scent, Missoni Parfum is an eau de parfum. So I'm not including any of those. These are actually parfum concentrated fragrances that here we're going over. Um, but I'm not including any of those. These are actual parfum concentrated scents that we're talking about. Not to mention, I do really like the ones that I just brought up, but again, those aren't really gonna fit the bill fully. So I will link all of these down below for you. All of these are scents that are going to be easy to pick up. There could be a few true parfums that I would choose, but they're just super hard to get. I'm not including any of those either. So these are all pretty much available. You can get them down below. I also have a mailing list you can sign up to. Uh, just last night, Lanoui Blue Electric popped in the stock, sent an email out, sold out within minutes, but I think over 40 of you guys were able to secure bottles before it sold out. They didn't have very many of them. Make sure you get on that list to kind of have an opportunity to get at things like that. Uh, low Mediol Extreme, Low Mediol Eau de Parfum, everything else like that shows up there as well. So definitely a nice resource. Now I want to get this started off with Polo Blue Parfum. So anyone that's just listening and not watching, Polo Blue Parfum. The reason why I'm clarifying is because there's also a Polo Deep Blue Parfum and um, that is also a great scent. I really like it. It is a parfum. Uh, but for this video, I wanted to focus on Blue Parfum. So Polo Blue right here, essentially that OG DNA that we all know what it smells like but it's richer and stronger. And I think that's kind of the essence of the Parfum. And I would take this over the original Polo Blue any day. I wouldn't touch the original Polo Blue anymore. I just have plenty of other things to wear that are probably better in this day and age. But Polo Blue Parfum, it's updated, it's refreshed, and this is a really good scent. One that's probably easy to sleep on, but it's awesome. Now this one here has Clary Sage, Lavender, orange and some oak in here, pretty heavy on the oak, the woods down there in the base, some patchouli as well, and then a lot of aromatics going on. So uh, just more classy, more refined, more mature, but ultimately it's updated and refreshed. And I think it's fantastic. I've been a big fan of this one ever since it first came out. It's uh, still a relatively new release, but that opening's gorgeous. You get those aromatics and that orange right off the rip. Smells beautiful. And there's kind of some texture, some earthiness in this one as well. Multi-dimensional. You may not expect it. It might seem basic on paper and sure it's nothing completely groundbreaking, but definitely a really worthwhile parfum scent with great performance. Next up we have my favorite from this line of three fragrances in total. Not like there's a ton to choose from, but this is the one that I would purchase if I could only have one. Uh, and ultimately it's Blue de Chanel Parfum. So um, it basically goes in reverse order of what my favorites are, starting at the end, the latest Parfum, my favorite, the Eau de Parfum in the middle there, my second favorite, and the Eau de Toilette at the very end would be my least favorite, although it's still very good, and realistically, all of these are really good. And you guys probably likely already have the Eau de Toilette, maybe even the Eau de Parfum, but I think this is the one that gets just the most versatility, but still kind of 
venturing away from that DNA slightly enough to make it maybe a bit more interesting overall. So this one here has lemon zest, lavender, geranium, mint, so kind of a green minty pop there. Sandalwood, cedarwood, amberwood, iso e super as well. I just kind of wanted to go over a few extra notes there because you'll notice the note breakdown itself is kind of different compared to the eau de parfum and the eau de toilette. Uh, those two are using the incense and grapefruit combo pretty heavily there. None of that here, okay? But similar vibes with the lemon zest kind of giving that pop off the rip and then this kind of fresh, bright pop from the geranium slash mint combination. It doesn't focus on that stuff though. It really kind of gets into that amber wood, sandalwood, semi-sweet dry down pretty quickly. You know, those notes start to come into play, but easily the sexiest smelling blue de Chanel in my opinion. I mean, this is just a gorgeous, completely stunning scent. My favorite, I love it. I wear this all the time. And again, we're talking about a parfum here. It's also gonna be the best performing one, at least on me. You see a lot of issues people have with the Eau de Parfum and especially the Eau de Toilette. Spending a lot of money, not getting the best performance. This is also the most expensive one, but I think that performance and quality and, and kind of refined nature makes up for that cost. Great stuff. Uh, next up, uh, this one's quite crazy here because it's a niche product, but you can get it actually on discounters cheaper than Blue de Chanel Parfum for kind of the same bottle size. It's Mansara Intense Cidrat Boise. So my Blue de Chanel there, I was 150 ml, right? And so pretty big bottle, still more than this though, um, because you can't get the Blue de Chanel at discounters. You can get this at discounters for around $100 even. Okay, retails for I think 200, maybe a bit more. So a little bit more than typical Mansara's because it's an extrait, you know, full parfum here. But I think this stuff is just amazing. Uh, pretty much every time I bring up Mansara Cedrat Boise and eau de, eau de Parfum concentration, uh, which is the original that's been out for years, uh, I always get one or two comments saying the performance isn't that good. So if you fall in that ballpark, this is the solution to your problem. And I would just say go for it because this is going to give you that performance and even some added depth and richness. And, and this is even more interesting and more fun to wear than the Eau de Parfum, especially if you've been wearing the Eau de Parfum for years like I have. Uh, Cedrat Boise EDP was my first ever niche fragrance. I'm very familiar with it, burned through a ton of it as you've seen my bottles before. Uh, this kind of revives that, that that flame for me. It kind of makes it fun to dive into something new again, but it's still very familiar. I just think it's amazing and strong as well. Almost too strong sometimes. Nice pressurized atomizer. That is just absolutely gorgeous. Truly one of the best Mancera offerings, seriously. Yeah, this next one is very common, okay? This one has been all over the place in terms of rumors of discontinuation and that sort of thing. Um, I don't know, I just don't. So I'm just gonna feature it anyway because you can still get it. It's Aqua de Jo Profumo. It's been weird for a while. It is Profumo, which translates to Parfum. There's always been kind of a debate about this one as well. People saying, no, it's actually an EDP. It's a Parfum according to the bottle and Armani's official website. So you do get parfum behaviors out of this. You know, it leaves a nice trail, a little bit more of a personal, closer to the skin type of scent, but again, that trail makes up for it, and also the longevity makes up for it. One of the best performing Aqua de Joes easily beats out the Eau de Toilette, it beats out the Eau de Parfum, and in most situations, it beats out Profondo. That, that parfum concentration with that incense and patchouli down low, just kind of has this one going on for a long time, especially when it's warmer outside, this stuff will stick by your side through pretty much anything until you go to bed and it ends up getting rubbed off, right? But this is a great performer, super versatile, and you gotta have it. You probably already do, but if you don't, you should. And kind of going back to what I was talking about with the Mansara, we have Versace Eros uh, Parfum. I almost said flame for no reason, it's kind of weird. Eros Parfum. So what do I mean by that? Um, Eros Eau de Toilette was also one of the fragrances that I got in the very beginning stages of my collecting, even before Mansara Cedrat Boise, right? That was a little while down the road, spending you know money on niche. Um, the Eros DNA I got very early on. 
worn a ton of it. Again, you can see my bottle, it's 200 mil, there's a lot missing. Now this, again, it's going back to that OG DNA that has been ran through and it's bringing it back. It's bringing it to life, modern, kind of refreshed, a little bit more mature, a little bit more refined, but it brings back that OG Eros performance, that super strong performance and almost aggressive, obnoxious performance. That's what this one has. Again, a lot of people say eh, Eau de Toilette doesn't do so well. Even Flame, I've seen people say doesn't perform that well. This one has a great track record so far, getting that true parfum concentration. And, you know, it's still going to be very playful, very, very juvenile, nothing that's going to be good for like really sit down, strict office settings where you just want to be taken very seriously. But in a more playful laid back scenario, this one is great. Next up, we have Tom Ford Noir Extreme, the new parfum and also the new fingerprint magnet. If you can see that. Yeah, uh, this stuff. It collects them. Is that a little bit better? Yeah, it's actually a lot better. Yeah, there you go. A little bit wiped off. I mean, this stuff, you'd really have to hit it with a microfiber towel pretty much every time you pick it up because it's, yeah, you just barely graze up against that. You know, in normal person lighting, you really can't tell too much, but in front of these huge bright lights in the camera, it's hard to miss, but I digress. Now, the Eau de Parfum has been out for some time now, and similar deal, guys. You see a trend here, and if you haven't seen it yet, you'll see it as we get to the very end of the video. A lot of these originals or things earlier down the line just anymore don't hold up in performance. You go anywhere, YouTube, comments, or whatever, it's just people saying, yeah, that one doesn't perform so good anymore. Tom Ford Noir Extreme another key example and i've never really gotten good performance from noir extreme Oda parfum and it has always bothered me because it's expensive this is the solution a little bit more leather going on here it's actually a little bit more masculine i think this is actually a well thought out flanker because some people just aren't going to rock with that Oda parfum maybe it's a bit too borderline feminine the leather in here kind of gives it an earthiness and a little bit of a rough texture that makes it more masculine and traditional in one way or another and that parfum concentration brings this to life and it has great performance still going to be a little bit more expensive but it does make up for it next up we have al Haramain amber oud exclusive blue so not blue edition let me get a good shot of this blue right there big difference this is a latent clone Blue Edition is a Blue de Chanel clone. So both blue bottles, but completely different scents entirely. And it's weird because this is not the only clone brand to do this. Our Moff Club de Nuit line is a perfect example of just anything and everything all in one line. Bottles look similar, names are similar. It, it can be confusing, it can be hard to keep up with, but it is what it is. And so yeah, you heard me, Leighton clone. Now, you're probably already like, okay, wait, Al Haramain has a Leighton clone already. Detour Noir, they do. And Detour Noir is still the best budget-friendly latent clone on the market. Better than Lalique White and Black, Tommy Hilfiger Impact Intense. We're talking $35, $33, 100 mil. This is, a, I think it's two ounce bottle, but it's a parfum and it's just of their more premium line. You can see it with the bottle and you can smell it. That's gonna be a controversial one. And at the end of the day, when it comes to getting compliments and smelling good, you don't need to buy this one. Go for the Al Haramain. It's essentially gonna be half the, well, I mean, less than half the price when you factor in price per mil. So it's much more affordable to go that direction. But from a, a collector's standpoint of wanting the more premium product and, and presentation, but even more importantly, scent, this one does take the cake. Um, kind of lacks some of that minty smell that you get from Leighton, that kind of menthol feeling. A little bit more of like a patchouli action going on in here. So it, it varies a little, but just enough to make it still kind of a, uh, less redundant you know there's kind of a different wearing experience out of this but still very much a latent clone and this has become one of my favorites i've been wearing this a lot wearing it more than latent which is completely crazy this gives me my latent fix with a twist and i love it terre de hermes pure parfum yeah a lot of people don't talk about this but it exists if the original eau de toilette wasn't strong enough for you then here you go um it's all about the vetiver, the bitter orange, the pepper, everything like that. You guys know it. it smells like a dirty orange. Um, it's masculine to the extreme. So pretty much the complete opposite of Eros 
Parfum, um, you know, that one has masculine tendencies as well. But I guess it's more so in the factor of being much more mature and refined and grown up down to business. That's what this is going to be. So if you work an office job, if you just work a job where it's a professional setting and you want to be uh, presented as such, this would probably be, out of everything in this video, one of the best to choose from. Now, you can't beat Blue de Chanel Parfum or even Polo Blue Parfum, but this is going to be the most confidence-inspiring and the most demanding and head-turning just because of how sharp and strong and woody, orangey it is. It really is something else. Kind of going back on the playful side here with Azaro the Most Wanted Parfum. Easily my second favorite the most wanted or my second favorite wanted fragrance i guess uh wanted by night still kind of my top pick you know it's just hard to knock that one off the top but uh this this does come close to it kind of has a grape smell in the opening this fizzy grape smell uh, you get this ginger bourbon vanilla some woods going on real nice uh kind of bubbly bright fizzy scent but then it dries down into this almost kind of boozy vanillic sweetness with some woods going on it's awesome. I love it. You know, that Dunhill, or that Dunhill, that opening kind of has a little bit of that Dunhill icon smell, uh, but you get past that pretty quick, especially on skin, and again, you get into the vanilla, the woods, and this kind of more so smooth, creamy, uh, inviting, relaxing type of smell. You know, it doesn't stay fresh and floral like Dunhill icon, but that opening, that kind of great fizzy smell, this does have it, which I think makes it really addicting. Uh, amazing stuff. Great parfum scent with great performance and nice mass appeal. Last up for this video, Narciso Rodriguez Blue Noir Parfum. Think of Dior Homme Intense, Valentino Homme Intense, but with basically a, a musky woody freshness, okay? So this is taking the sweet iris from those and then utilizing that musky woody DNA that the Blue Noir line is, is known for. And that's why I like it so much, because a lot of times it's fresh iris mixed with fresh everything else, like Prada Lome, Dior Homme O, and so on. This is sweet iris mixed with fresh DNA and backbone, which hasn't really been done before, at least in the mainstream designer market until now. And that gives this one unbeatable versatility. It's more versatile than uh, Prada Lome in some instances, because it can kind of swing for some warmer temperatures and get away with it and even some cooler temperatures it's definitely more versatile than the dior or the valentino the gentleman those sweet irises for sure this one brings a ton to the table and at a parfum this is the full deal all right you guys that's gonna do it for me 10 of the strongest most potent pure parfum scents that you should have let me know your favorites down below i will link these down below as well thank you so much for watching stay safe stay healthy and we'll see you tomorrow with another one take care